Today, we're talking about Morgan's Canon and levels of complexity in behavior. Stay tuned. Before we get started, subscribe to Psy vs. Psy, help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you about Morgan's Canon. You may have heard of Occam's Razor or the Parsimony Principle. This is a key principle in science, that if two explanations are equally good at describing the data, the simplest solution is the one you should accept. Let's say I want to up my ping pong performance, so I start doing a number of things to work on this. One thing I do is I practice for at least three hours a day, but I have also recently started using a deodorant sponsored by table tennis legend Jan Ove Waldner. After three weeks, I noticed that my win percentage has increased by 20%. One explanation is that practice plus Jan's juice made the difference. An alternative explanation might be that practice alone made the difference. Now, since we know that practice improves performance already, the parsimony principle suggests that that's the explanation we should favor. This will prevent us from ascribing to superstitious beliefs about the world that aren't actually true. This is key to making sure our scientific understanding of the world best matches the actual world in which we live. Well, psychology has its own version of the parsimony principle. It's called Morgan's Canon, named after the influential psychologist C. Lloyd Morgan. The saying goes like this, in no case is an animal activity to be interpreted in terms of higher psychological processes if it can be fairly interpreted in terms of processes which stand lower in the scale of psychological evolution and development. In other words, don't accept a complicated explanation of a behavior when a simpler one will do. Well, that sounds good, but there's a problem. What is a higher psychological process versus a lower one anyway? This idea has embedded within it a hierarchy of behavior. Some behaviors are more rudimentary than others. Does that even make sense in light of what we know about behavior? In short, yes. Morgan was noticing animal behaviors that seemed like insights, where an animal seems to have a purpose in what they're doing. It's easy to picture a cat that knows how to open a door and think, wow, that cat understands doorknobs and locks. However, you didn't see the hundreds of times the cat tried to get through the door through trial and error and failed until it accidentally jumped at the knob just right. Based on its success, it tried again to jump in that spot and eventually got good at opening the door. Now there's a big difference between jump with the shiny thing and I understand doorknob mechanisms in terms of what kinds of mental abilities are required. Morgan's canon suggests we should stick to the former rather than the latter to understand this behavior. So what might this hierarchy of behavior look like? Well, I'll give you a few examples and plot them in terms of complexity, but note that this is an oversimplification. I would start with what we call elicited behaviors that arise purely in response to stimuli. Things like reflexes that occur naturally in response to certain stimuli are at this level. Anything that you might call an instinct or innate behaviors, though these words are kind of loaded and have some issues associated with them, would also fall under this category. Like a newly hatched praying mantis attacking a small moving dot, or baby birds opening their mouths when they sense movement near the nest. Non-associative learning, such as sensitization and habituation, involve learning about a stimulus that's repeated over time and can be placed above elicited behavior. Following that, we might put things like associative learning, classical conditioning, AKA Pavlov's dogs, instrumental and operant conditioning. Above that, you might place social or observational learning. Then things that involve theory of mind or the ability to imagine what another individual might be thinking. Perspective taking might go near the top of the list along with abstract ideas and concepts. Some of these abilities are more foundational, being more widespread among the animal kingdom than others, and some of these abilities require the others as prerequisites. Another good example might be math and numbers. You might start at the bottom with ideas of more and less, bigger and smaller. Then move to an ordered system, such as counting, one, two, three, and so on. After counting would come operations like addition and subtraction, and then more complicated mathematical operations. 
it's unlikely you could add and subtract without being able to count first, which is why school goes in the order that it does. Now, here comes the key to Morgan's canon. In order to show that a behavior operates at a higher level, we need to eliminate explanations at the lower levels. Consider the example of Clever Hans, the horse that could do mathematics. This was a famous case early in the history of psychology during the early 1900s. The horse's owner claimed that not only could the horse do basic math and spelling, but he could also read people's minds. The owner would think of a number, write it on a chalkboard out of view of the horse, and the horse would stomp out the number with his hooves, much to the delight of spectators. However, investigation by German psychologist Oskar Funkst revealed that the horse was actually responding to a tiny change in facial expression of the owner. If the owner didn't know the answer, neither did the horse. It's a lot easier to stop stomping when the eye twitches than it is to learn how to actually do math or read minds. So Morgan's canon says we should assume the easier task unless that can be carefully eliminated as an explanation. This does create a problem though. This makes it especially tricky to show things like math and language ability in non-humans. Does the chimpanzee sign the words water and bird when it sees a duck because it understands the concept of a duck or because it's been rewarded for making those signs around ducks before? For that matter, it makes it hard to explain human behavior that's due to higher level processes. Do I know if you actually love your mother or have you just learned to associate her with food? After all, one of the things that is so powerful about classical and instrumental conditioning is they can explain so many behaviors. This means I have to be really clever in how I design my experiments to control for more basic explanations. Often, this involves presenting new challenges with novel stimuli that the organism has never seen before, so that they can't rely upon trial and error learning or previously learned associations. So that's the idea behind Morgan's Canon, the extension of the parsimony principle to psychology. It's fun to look at all the YouTube videos of animals exhibiting funny or impressive behaviors and think, wow, they understand far more than we know. But keep in mind that you don't know how they got to that point and it's amazing what a little basic learning can do. If you found this video helpful, press the like button and get six cool points. Subscribe to get more videos on all things psychology and until next time, keep thinking.